It's always it's gotten a lot better over the years too. Yeah, I, I've also heard something. some stories. Yeah. yeah, there is a stage there now. <laughs> yeah. For a long time, it was a floor show. Only a floor, floor show. <sighs> Seriously, like a floor venue. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. This video is brought to you by Wicked Good Cupcakes. We'll hear more about them later, but for now, let's get on to today's video. Welcome to Room 6, the channel is dedicated to the local music scene and the people that make it, including my guests and me. I'm Joshua, and my guests today are a hard rock and metal band, but they're not afraid of acoustic. Uh, their debut show was January 2019. Their latest single, Shattered, is out now. Uh, please welcome to the channel, Travelers, or three-fourths of them. <laughs> oh yeah. Cheers. Welcome, welcome, Cheers. guys. And welcome. welcome. If you are watching this and you don't know who, whoop, bring it there, boom. If you're watching this and you don't know who the Travelers are, thank you very much. Go ahead and tell them who you are and what you do in the band while I get myself some Room 6 whiskey. Yeah, well, uh, not bad. Our name is Travelers. We're a hard rock metal band. You're doing great. You're doing great. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, we just, uh, just a band in town, you know, big from Vegas, everyone. And, uh, yeah, we play hard rock metal, like we were saying, and... Do a cut. I don't know. <laughs> Who just, are you? And what do you do in the music. band? I'm the vocalist. I sing. Obviously. I do all that stuff, um, and it's super fun. I love it. So yeah, he does everything. We kind of just stand around. We don't do anything. Actually, no, that's all. <laughs> Anyway, my name is Joaquin, and I play drums. So I mean, I guess there's that, but I mean, that's not like that's a big accomplishment in any way, shape, or Wow! Whoa! Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> rhythm. You're the heart, man. Wait, you like I just want to. Let me just put it out. Well, let's, let's just put it out. Joaquin is like one of the most talented drummers I've ever met and played with in my life. So I appreciate that. Put that there. I could have used. I could have. I could have used those kind words like years ago, but um, wow. <laughs> years ago, the upbringing. <laughs> But yeah, I'm Joey. I'm the uh, guitarist of the band, um, and I just jam out, man. That's really about it. Um, I try really hard to get everything in the background in regards to sound as well, uh, backing tracks and all of that. We just started that not too long ago, but that's a work in progress. So hopefully soon, once all I get settled and we learn a bit more about this and that, the production value on our shows is going to be top notch. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. Nice. Good job. Yeah, yeah, that was a good one. That was a good one. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so much better than him. I swear. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> you should be the vocalist. Now. Did you just hit the lavalier mic? <laughs> oh, I might have. Yeah, it is right there. Sound guys, Wait, I want to test that. Yeah. Yeah. Don't. <laughs> are you? Are you? Are you okay? You okay, Bob? <laughs> Sound guys, just lose it. <laughs> the clip. Yes. Let me so, see if I do it. No, it does not. <laughs> Interview's going great. Nothing there. So, <laughs> number one, I wanted to say uh, thank you for coming on the show. Of course. And thank you. We'll, yeah, I, nice. I was wondering, we're missing somebody. We're missing Sergio. Sergio, mm -hmm. yep. Sergio Lopez. And he plays boss. Yeah, he, yeah, he slaps the bass, the boss, doing that, the, the low, the low, low. Um, yeah, he couldn't make it, unfortunately, but, you know. Um, He's practicing yeah. his stance. You ever seen this, the way <laughs> this man plays bass? <laughs> Oh yeah, if you've ever seen him, he's wearing a periphery sweatshirt on stage. Wow. <laughs> it's kinda of, he's got like a he's got like a thing. It's really yeah, cool. It's yeah. Thing. I didn't know this was gonna be a shade throwing contest. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny because like sometime in, in, last year it was like 110 at some shows and he's like, Nope, I'm still gonna wear it. I'm, and I'm like, cool man. <laughs> you do you and man. And he's, he's like melting. <laughs> it's like he's melting on the inside. It's, right. no, it's awesome though. I really, yeah, we love him and we miss you. We, we wish you were here too and Speaking of which, if you want to be on the channel, whether reviewed, interviewed, or both, hit me up using the email address down in the description for Room 6, or click on the Room 6 social media link. That's where you can find all sorts of ways to support the channel as well, such as room6.shop, where I sell merch, and also a couple of my own CDs, and, or you can become a patron on Patreon. I have some patron-only content there. It all helps me to make better videos, but also to support the local scene in many ways, including a, a, a showcase of former... Room six guests, and uh, you know, I pay them. So anything you can do to help out will help me to help the scene. Thank you very much. Moving on. Josef. Yes. Joey. Bag of donuts. Uh, how long have you been in Vegas? I've been born and raised here. So I'm I've sorry. Been, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
I've been here like 17 years, so I'm a native. Yeah, you know, 26 years running on 27. Mm. <laughs> right on. And we're, so you didn't even get moved here. <laughs> no. Like a lot of people do. Mm -hmm. and are you, now, you were, um, you were not a native. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, you were in New York. Yeah, okay, so interesting story. I was born in New York, mm -hmm. um, but I moved when I was like two years old, you were not moved. even. <laughs> yeah, so um, I'm actually from Oklahoma. That's where my whole, my whole family's from. And, um, you know, I'm always visiting and stuff. So in New York to Oklahoma to Vegas? To Oklahoma, yeah. My parents were both born and raised in Oklahoma. Um, so yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm from Oklahoma. I came out here for, uh, well, I mean, I moved in, what, like sixth grade, middle school, you know, so obviously it was just job stuff with my parents but um okay so you yeah didn't, you didn't do that i'm tired of living in this one horse town <laughs> i'm moving to vegas man yeah yeah i know we yeah we we moved to the the big a, a bigger city for sure but um yeah no i've been here ever since just like uh, almost 15 years so i i consider myself you know yeah if you've lived in from, vegas from for vegas, 10 years so. or more you're you're native yeah yeah, yeah, so. yeah for sure yeah you know how awful this place is <laughs> oh my gosh yes yeah we're yeah. still here <laughs> and then you are from linwood yeah so I was. How so, did that happen? I don't know. It's weird. Uh, so I was born in Linwood, but I was only really in California for a couple months because my parents got jobs out of here. So I was moved over here as well. So right. It seems like everybody I talk to that's come to Vegas was moved here. Native gang. Now I I actually <laughs> was not. Um, I my wife and I had op opportunities to move out here with our jobs um, and. It was like, well, this and this and this and this and this. Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. And then the reason we moved out here six months later, moved back to Oklahoma or Oakland. So I was oh, yeah. like, well, mm -hmm. but you know, and then a kid, and then blah blah blah. You know, so here For we sure. are. Well, that's cool. Who knows where? Who knows what the future will bring? Mm -hmm. okay. um, real quick, I wanted to say uh, or ask rather, because that's what I do here. I want to ask. Let's talk earliest musical influence. And when I say that, I mean what is that? earliest musical memory you have of I want to do that and mm. what was it what led you down this twisted road <laughs> <laughs> my first thought it immediately brings me back to play Nintendo 64 uh, hey. with my wow. three CD track stereo pump in Cannibal Corpse Static X uh, Kill Switch Engage and Shadows Fall those are some of like my very first but how did you get into that music because that's not generally mm -hmm. a Here's your first, you know, exposure to music is Cannibal Corpse. So, uh, yeah, you're not too wrong. Well, not too far off. Really, like, I think, like, Disturbed and Corn might have been. Um, but, no, pretty much it was. One of my mom's friends figured out that I was, like, a little dirty little metalhead when I was, like, <laughs> 11 years old. So he was like, hey, man, I got something for you. Let me go to my car real quick. And he gave me, a, like, three Cannibal Corpse albums. Wow. Um, Burn the Priest. If you know who those guys are, then shout out to you. Um... And Burn the Priest, right? Shout out to them, too. Oh, straight up. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they are who they are now, which is, they they got <laughs> that, it going. That was deep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're Lamb of God now, for those who don't know. Um, hmm. And, yeah, he gave me a few other really crazy, raunchy death metal albums. And from there on, I definitely got softer. My influences are different now, but that's that's where I would say where things started for me, for sure. Nice. Next! I didn't expect you to say Lamb of God. I just assumed they were just a band that just isn't a thing anymore. That's, no? I didn't, that's I didn't really expect cool. the Nintendo 64. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, that was, was the first um, video game system I had, too, at least for me. And um, I'm a huge gamer, so um, yes, I have very fond memories with the Nintendo 64. And oh, yeah. Are you are you familiar with uh, some Room 6 alumni, Decaying Tigers? Uh, I've heard of them. They, I, they, yeah. pl they, they make chiptune. Like they they make their really? own eight bit music. No they, way. they make music using Game Boys. Oh, that, is awesome. that is so cool. Yeah, they they oh, have wow. they, they've they've modded modded Game Boys and they they get it going. They also have a guitar <laughs> bass and a, a electric drum set that's all been modded out. <laughs> you know, wow, it's amazing. Crazy. It's pretty much all instrumental, but they put on a show. You're just like I can't turn away. This is amazing, and yeah. So uh, oh. decaying tigers, um, and and they they were who they were. We had a good time. But they somehow managed to shoehorn an entire show with speakers and stands and monitors and their own mixing board and everything into room six and then gave me a cable <laughs> to go oh to my, my garage. Gosh, that's crazy. And I'm like, yeah, I got to put these lights on the wall. <laughs> There's, I, I need more space. This is crazy. That's that so is sick, cool. Though. Yeah, it was. Um, so we didn't, we didn't talk about your earliest musical influence. 
Oh, okay. Farcer, did you finish with the music? Oh, yeah. I was just talking about Nintendo yeah, 64. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah no <laughs> point. Yeah, video games, whatever. Um, gosh, I don't know. I guess I, I remember. Um, but what was the memory of like? I want to do that. I want to, you know, so, sing in a band or whatever. So when I was really young, um, I used to go to like a, I don't know what you call it, like a Chuck E. Cheese type thing, but it was a different kind of, it was called Incredible Pizza. It was hilarious. So okay. I loved it. My, my, I have two siblings that are younger. So the three of us, we just, you know, mom took us all the time, but there was like a karaoke thing too. And I just remember always like, I would sing like 10 songs. A night, you know, every time we were there, I would just God. sit, I would literally just sing karaoke. I would have hated to work and there. And I'm like nine years old, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm like nine years old, maybe ten years old, and I loved it. Um, and so I was always singing, and um, I think what got me into it was, and this is what I tell, um, I teach music, so this is what I tell students too, whenever they are asked, they ask, um, it started with Guitar Hero, the game. Like I said, I'm a huge gamer. Um, my mom got me Guitar Hero 2 on the nice. PS2 back then, and um, I got really good at it. I loved it, and, and she said, now she came from um, a musical kind of family, too. She and her three siblings were like a musical group, like it's like an acapella kind of group, and they, they would like literally tour Tulsa and do right. gigs all the time, and they would do crazy stuff, actually. She has some cool stories about it, but... Um, and every Christmas, it's always really fun to like see them. They always sing together too, which is really nice. nice. But um, but yeah, no, she said like you might like the real guitar. Maybe you should try that. <laughs> <laughs> I said okay, yeah, sure, and uh, learn some chords and and that it just that's where it started, I guess. I mean, took some lessons after that, and all of a sudden, I'm a uh, I'm into music and incredible and, pizza. yeah, incredible, incredible pizza, pizza, yeah, pizza. and it's still there. It's still in Tulsa. It's on, right next to Woodland Hills Mall. If you wow. want to look it up, I don't know. <laughs> who, who knows? Who, who else has come out of there, I wonder? <laughs> it was one of those really early, like, Chuck E. Cheese mixed with mini golf and go-karts and all that. Like, the whole thing. The whole, the whole nine awesome. yards. It was super fun. I yeah. mean, as a kid, it sounds awesome to work there. would have been just like, <laughs> can I please not work where the character <laughs> yeah. is? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was probably terrible. Was but, there um, an animatronic band by chance? Unfortunately, no. It was not a Five Nights at Freddy's situation. Oh, I was about to say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Benedict. Anyway, God. <laughs> did I mention I have a teenager? So I've, I've heard, ah, yes, I've heard all the songs inspired it. by it. Five um, of eighty six. Exotic butters, <laughs> man. Yeah, I get it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> all right. So earliest musical influences. Well, I mean, growing on a, up in a Hispanic household, uh, my parents are Mexican, so it's kind of like all you hear is just you know a certain type of music. So you'd always hear like uh norteño music and like cumbia and everything mm -hmm. and then you know that was like the first music that i was ever exposed to and then you know one day my dad just like changed the radio you know and it was like it was like a rap station and it like blew my mind because i'm just like wait you mean there's more music than what i hear in the house <laughs> there's more, there's more. <laughs> Damn well. but um I don't know, like, I was, I definitely felt I'm, it. I'm sorry, was, did you just say ShamWow? ShamWow. ShamWow. Okay. Yeah. I like that. No, I just want to make sure I heard that. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have a ShamWow in the garage somewhere. <laughs> That's They're amazing, cool right? Dude. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's dried out as shit, but I mean, you know. All you gotta do is rehydrate that bitch. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and then, um, but it wasn't until I started, like, hearing rock music that I was just like, okay, I like this more than anything else I've ever heard, and it's just like, it's weird. Going from, you know, Norteño cumbia music to rap music and then hearing rock music, I'm just like, wow, there's something about this that's really special. And the first couple artists that I listened to were uh, Avenged Sevenfold, uh, Rise mm -hmm. Against, Green Day, Seether. Seether was one of the big ones. Like, well, I that's love an Seether. interesting spectrum you just... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's strange, right? Yeah. Speaking of Green Day... <laughs> Matthias, <laughs> I love that. All right, all right. You went from a Green tri Green Day tribute band to West End Knockout to our finest hour. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk um, about that a little bit. Well, it's funny. It's my musical influence when it came to rock and whatever is um, very similar to Joaquin's. Um, I met I met Sergio when we were in middle school, and he got me into Green Day, um, and I got obsessed with them. Mm -hmm. And then it turned into Metallica, and then it was Avenged Sevenfold. That was kind of like the the, the three well, see, gateways. That's a progression that makes sense. Avenged <laughs> Sevenfold to Green Day. Yeah, oh, yeah, opposite. Yeah, it's a little, a little weirder, huh? Yeah. I, I have a funny story about Green Day with my family. <laughs> my family has a history with Green Day. Yeah, because uh, we moved here from Northern California, and my uh, my wife and her her sister grew up in Northern California. Yeah, and uh, thanks. So, <laughs> It's nice. I like it. It's cool. You, you must be great at parties. Anyway. 
So, two things. One, as you know, Green Day wasn't originally called Green Day. Mm-hmm. When they were younger, they were called Sweet Children. Okay. I don't, oh, I didn't, you didn't know this. No, I didn't know this. I, I don't know. I'm not, yeah. So, they were called Sweet Children, and they played shows at, like, the community center. You know, they're, they're kids. Yeah, right. And my wife was in the crowd of kids. It was one of the kids throwing banana peels and Coke cans at them because they were so bad. Oh, my gosh. What? Really? Yes. And that is, she's, it's a point of pride with my wife. <laughs> My sister-in-law, on the other hand, was in Amoeba Records. And if you know Berkeley, California, you know Amoeba Records. It's iconic. It's still there, actually. Um, and she was trying to get out. She was trying to, like, get to the door. And some guy was in front of her, pushed some out of the way. And says, who's that guy I think he is? Billy Joe? And it was Billy Joe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yes. So that's our, our history with Green Day. And um, I just think it's funny. And, every, and we would drive over um, the bridge uh, that basically is like, here's Crockett, where they grew up. Mm. There's a bridge, and we would drive over and be like, hi, Green Day. <laughs> so, <laughs> very yeah, interesting. Yeah, it's very funny. Um, Joy, what is your... You haven't always been in this band. Okay. I didn't know Joy was coming on the show, so I didn't research him. Sorry. <laughs> so, can you talk a little bit about your band progression or your, your musical progression from where you, you know, started to being in Travelers? Um, well, I took... Uh, where should I start? Damn. From the beginning. From no, the start. Start at the middle. Always start, start at the, the middle. middle. <laughs> All right. So my first little like band project, it was just getting me and a couple of dirty metalheads just jamming. We would always go to, <laughs> I love uh, when he says that. <laughs> dirty little metalheads. <laughs> we, we would go over to um, uh, this dude's house. He was my drummer at the time, his grandparents' house. Um, and we would be in this little room with my, um, my half stack that I sold an ounce to buy um wow and that's, that's a lot back then too. yeah man yeah <laughs> a little little middle school me you know little high school me um it was just some like shitty old half stack that had like carpet on it that i just barely replaced and then like an old mpeg guitar head which they don't even make those anymore so i definitely still have that um but no we would be in the in the broom in the back just kind of playing things like miss may i and as blood runs black i learned a lot nice. of them they're kind of mostly my uh guitar inspiration um, but before that, I took like middle school classes and whatnot, and then I took like orchestra and j- drum line in high school and whatnot. Um, but afterwards, um, I ended up being in this other band, Leave This World Blind. We did a little bit of this and that. And then um, I don't know how far you want me to go with that. I felt myself talking. Well, keep going, man. I want to hear this. This, this, this is, is a this long form interview, man. Keep it going. Cool. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I just want to say shout out to Grandma, to Graham and Gramps for letting you, you know, rehearse there. I don't yeah. know too many grandparents that would be like, yeah, cool, totally. We were smoking a ton of weed in there too. Wow. Just like, they didn't care. <laughs> we were we were like trying to be sneaky about it too, and they're like, I, like thinking about it now. It's like they obviously knew. Hey, There's no yeah, way they did. Yeah. Right? The yeah. Seventies show. <laughs> Man, you know the ninety show just came out, and it's like it's not the best, but it's also not that bad. Anyway. It, 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 I I haven't seen it because just what I've seen online makes me just like. No, no. Yeah, it's yeah. it's worth a watch. No, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a respectable respectable idea. Um, uh, okay, sure. But uh, so from uh, Leave This World Blind, from Leave This World name, Blind, um, what was the next like step on your musical journey? Um, I started a band named Fault. Um, just, and just Fault, just Fault, nice. not Fault in Our Stars, not nothing but strawberries or whatever it is. Um, yeah, and we did that for a couple <laughs> of years, and things were pretty cool, and then um. We went on like an extended hiatus, so to speak. And then I went to high school with this guy. Uh, we were in drumline together, actually. Um, so he randomly hit me up and he was like, hey, I, we need a guitarist. And I was like, all right, bet. I'm not doing nothing. So here we are. Been for about a year, a little over a year now. Yeah. Yeah. So a great precursor to Honestly, that it's is... probably a year and a half now, yeah. actually. Yeah. So happy year and a half anniversary. Time Aww. doesn't exist. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't Time mean to totally interrupt Time is a construct. But... Yeah, <laughs> I can't. Oh, I already <laughs> forgot what I was going to say. Oh, so a precursor. So precursor to that. So he actually commented on like one of the posts uh, on Instagram that I had like put one day. And he was just like, I'd love to play with a, sh- uh, a show with you guys or whatever, something like that. And then I looked back what, on that. Travelers? Uh, yeah, like okay. he commented. And, uh, I mean, I can post a screenshot of it later, yeah. There's That's funny, because I don't remember that. I was probably stoned. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, and it's just like, you know, and then um, we were just looking for, like, you know, like, just a guitar player. And then I was just like, you know what? I remember that Joey from high school commented on one of my pictures. You know what? I'm going to hit him up. So I did. and Never hurts to ask. Yeah, never hurts to ask. Yeah. Cool. How about you then? Uh, musically, was it 
what came before uh, Travelers? So before Travelers, um, <coughs> so a year after I graduated high school, so I graduated in 2013. So in 2014, I'm so uh, I ended up, <laughs> so I ended up uh, joining like my first local band, uh, Dead on Sight, and the reason I that's a good name, yeah. yeah. So I I met them through uh, through this girl that I ended up I, I ended up dating her for a while, but uh, she knew one of the members from that band, so that's how I got hooked up with them. And you know we played a lot of shows mainly like an Eagle. We did a bunch of house shows too, and that's kind of like what I was used to back then. It was just Eagle and house shows. Mm-hmm. There was you know Eagle Hall. And, um, yeah, if you don't know what he's talking about, Eagle Airy Hall is a, an, an amazing, like, all ages place that the, the bills have been getting crazy big on it. I mean, yeah. I'm seeing like seven yeah. to eight bands on the bill. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. you're just like, how much is the ticket? It's got to be worth it. So uh, that, is a, that is a venue that I, I keep meaning to go to. And I, oh, yet, it's awesome. I get yeah. to go. Uh, as part of the channel, I, I do venue reviews and I want to go. I just, there's always something, you know? Totally. It's always, it's gotten a lot better over the years too. Yeah. I, I've Definitely. also heard some stories. Yeah. yeah. There is a stage there now. <laughs> yeah. For a long time, it was a floor show. Only a floor, floor show. Seriously, like a floor venue, I mean. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, we've all played the floor, the corner. You yeah, know? yeah. 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 Um, yeah. The drum riser was maybe like. Oh, there was a. Oh, that's time. right. There was a. There was a yeah, drum riser. Was, that's right. It was like, it's like yeah. half a regulation step. Yeah. So, <laughs> honestly, yeah. Right on. So, from that band to what was next? Uh, we actually did kind of like a reboot from that band. Uh, me and a couple of the guys from the band. So, the person that I, the person that that girl knew, who got me into the band, like he ended up uh, leaving. So, me and the other guys kind of just like rebranded, and we were called Dark Altar, and that was more like a. Kind of like a dark rock, uh, very, I uh, forgot what that specific genre of music is, but it's like gothy and it's like dark wave. That's what it was. It was okay. dark wave music. That's interesting. Cool. I've heard that so, never. Yeah. So that was kind of like a new territory for me because I literally had never heard any kind of like dark wave bands or anything in that genre. So it was kind of like a learning experience, right. but it was fun. And, you know, that's where like eyeliner and, the, you know. Right on. Well, we're going to take a quick break here because, uh, I'm, first of all, I'm empty, but also, here's a message from future Josh. And now, a word from our sponsors. Thanks, past Josh. Mmm, I love cupcakes. It's a cake you can hold in your hand. Plus, you can fill them with virtually anything. And the toppings can be whatever you like. You know who makes really good cupcakes? Wicked good cupcakes, that's who. What started as a way for a mom and daughter to spend time together quickly became a nationwide phenomenon. Their innovative cupcake in a jar idea, first pitched on the TV show Shark Tank for shipping delicious homemade cupcakes nationwide, has made Wicked Good Cupcakes a household name. With decadent flavors and enticing, unique presentation, Wicked Good Cupcakes' delicious, sweet, and fun cupcake jars are a great way to add delight to any occasion. Just for watching this video and for being part of Room 6 for a limited time, you can use my affiliate link down in the description to get free ground shipping on custom six packs. Delivering to me here in Nevada, that's a savings of almost 20 bucks. Plus, you'll be helping out the channel. Thanks to Wicked Good Cupcakes for being a sponsor, and let's get back to the show. So, I think we got everybody answering that last question, and that's cool. Incidentally, if you want to help out the channel, I know I mentioned about like the, the clicking the Room 6 social media link. The real way to help out the channel, just click that link down in the description if that sponsor spot interested you at all. Uh, it's something I'm really trying to do is grow the sponsorship here so that I don't have to keep, you know, asking you for money. Hey. That being said, Matt. Yeah, what's up? What's your best yo-yo trick? Oh gosh. Oh um, yes. You know, I don't know. I'm not too good at it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. You know, I know some tricks, but um. But what's your, what, what, would you, what do you think <laughs> is your best one, man, or favorite one? Mm, good question. I wish I knew all the names of the tricks, to be honest with you. But you know, I can do the, I can do the one where I. <laughs> I know it was a good, uh, a good COVID hobby, a good pandemic hobby when we were all stuck. But I was, yeah. I was like throwing it sideways and wrapping it around and doing this whole thing and yeah oh, i wish i had one i don't even like carry i used to carry them around with me i don't even do that anymore <laughs> you gotta keep it up dude yeah it was right. i know right i oh gosh i know i know but at least you could do that i remember he gave me one and i was trying to like learn it at home and it's just like every time i would just throw it down it wouldn't come back to me 
Yeah, <laughs> just like everything else in my life. It is. It's all on the wrist, and I forgot how. Well, what's <laughs> funny is like a lot of the yo-yos. Um, when you do tricks, they don't come back up to you. Mm. You have to do a trick to get it back up. I've so noticed I had to that, learn that too. You, like yeah. you get it spinning and it stays down there, and I'm like, mm -hmm. how? <laughs> how? But, exactly. Yeah. It's this. There's a certain bearing that's. Physics. like concave and so all of a sudden there's just no friction on it it's really it was we're, really we're interesting we're gonna get back to music i promise i swear <laughs> hey hobbies are cool i think yeah. right speaking <laughs> of which budgies yes i have two budgies currently mm. like i was never a bird person before they kind of just bird came into man. my life i feel like i don't know like i feel like pets choose you like i don't know if that makes any sense well i did not have a choice with our Oh, you! A lot of you OG Room Sixers will know, maybe even have seen on camera, my dog Chloe. That I had no choice. <laughs> I I was in California on a road trip with my child. We get a phone call in the car on the way back. Guess what? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> oh, so hey, by the way, <laughs> yeah, we have a dog. I have never oh, wanted God. a dog, but this dog is perfect for us. And like you said, it it, it you, you kind of just are like, all right, I guess I guess I'll, I, you can stay, and I'll I'll like you. <laughs> no, she's she's pretty awesome. She does a great job of scaring off intruders. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah well, I mean, as soon as I rang the doorbell, she, she was barking up the storm, she, and you were like, "Sick him!" Literally, <laughs> literally three seconds after she sees, oh, okay, it's just a person. It's a I don't know. What, I don't know what she's alerting me to. It's like a package, a package, a package. Right, right. Okay. <laughs> how, how about you? You got um, any hobbies that are are weird and out there? Um. Man, I was a nerd for a really long time. I play a lot of video games and watch anime. Hey, once a nerd, always a nerd. Pretty nerds much. are cool. I like. <laughs> we're all nerds. Yeah, it didn't used to be cool, but now it, it's it's it, the thing to be is a nerd. Do you I know suffered so you can. <laughs> yeah, right. Do you know what's still not cool though? I walked so you could run. Yeah, speed running Dark Souls. I used to do that a lot, and it was it was it was it was it was, it was rough. I know that First game like all, the back of my hand. It's a little rough. I mean, I know that they people do it, but I just. It, it's not a game that's like nobody did it in five minutes, right? Um, I know you can. I know you can boundary break and you know there's some stuff, but I've seen spe speed running of it, but it still was like a half hour or something. Yeah, now well, you know sometimes it's the best you can get. World records are world records. I'm pretty sure the record right now is like 36 minutes. I could be entirely wrong about that though. God, it's still crazy considering the game itself how low key vast it is. It's not like Skyrim vast, but with the difficulty right. with the interlocking maps and all that. It could be rough. It could be confusing. If I could write my memory and play it for the first time again, of course I would. Uh, I think that all the time about games. I'm like, I wish I could experience for the first time again. Subnautica is a huge one. Yeah. Any gamers, please play Subnautica if you're listening. Memory cards. <laughs> memory <laughs> cards. <laughs> oh, I'm old. Anyway, so, getting back to music. I want to talk favorite show memory as travelers where you were performing. And it could be, that went really great. I, marked, I checked off some rock star, you know, things off my list or that was crazy how it, it blew you know whatever the roof caught on fire what is your favorite <laughs> what is the favorite show memory that you like to pull out and tell people well i got one you got one yeah I do. i'm thinking i gotta think about it I, my, my memory is shot i think ours is the same yeah, ours yeah. Is the same one. <laughs> all right wait let's say at the same time all right venue three wait, two, two one. one house of blues <laughs> yes <laughs> nice uh, yeah, that's the uh, one yeah pp's touched you what? <laughs> so good night, everybody. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, it's okay. A good one. I'm gonna need <laughs> anyway, more. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you that. all saw the disclaimer at the front of the, the video, right? Was I there? No, I'm no I was. I was, I was <laughs> yeah. I feel like you know. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, we actually had a fill-in that's only played that one show with us, actually. So that was like a whole new. Unique... <laughs> I wonder why it was only once. <laughs> was touched. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he got a little, he got a little worried about that, you know. And, uh, no, I'm just kidding. House of Blues green rooms are really legit, though. Seriously, yeah, I, nice. I played there once, and I remember, and I was just like, a shower in every green room is amazing. Yeah. So, um, no, seriously, what was your favorite show memory there? So it was, it was like an all-in kind of. Uh, they call it the all-in showcase. showcase. It was just like right. a local show at House of Blues on an off night when they didn't have, they didn't have the room booked. Um, and it was great. They gave us like a thousand tickets just to kind of hand out and just for free. And which was like stacks, like this, yeah. this tall, just like rubber banded up. Just, he just <laughs> threw it like, yeah, yeah, it was crazy. That was crazy. It was really cool. Yeah. And um, the turnout was great. It was awesome. And we got to play House of Blues and it was just the most fun. It yeah. was like the, the coolest show. Such a unique experience. And yeah, I, I love the sound playing there because you got yeah. a sound person there and a sound person there. Right. It, right. I, just, I remember I can hear everything. This is amazing. So. 
Oh, yeah. And so for you, it was the same thing? Yeah. But for different reasons. See, I really like the green room because... I don't know, something about seeing all those folded towels. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, but honestly, yeah, it was it was it was a good time, you know, just like Kink unlocked. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was nice. Like I, I feel like we were treated pretty professionally. I'm not saying like people at other venues haven't, I'm just saying like you got a little taste of you know of you know, what's next going forward. You know what I mean? Exactly. The only thing missing was like your name on the door kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Versus playing, have you ever performed in the courtyard upstairs at House of Blues in Manila Bay? No, not up there. You don't even get water. You don't even get a bottle of water. You get Jack. You get nothing. I, and, and I mean, maybe I get, I think, I think if you've been there for a while, like you're getting paid to play there and and you, you repeat, they may take care of you with the water. (laughs) <laughs> but yeah, yeah. it's just so, like I, I've literally had bands show up. Uh, I remember playing up there doing an the acoustic thing, and another act they showed up with their own little cooler chest, ready totally. to go, ready to pregame. And I was just like, "This is really Mandalay Bay? You can't even give us a freaking glass of Coke?" No? Yeah, that's bizarre. Yeah. How about you? What's your favorite show memory? Um, I thought about it pretty hard just now for the past couple seconds, mm-hmm. and honestly, I would have to say. The show we played at Recycled Propaganda, simply because that place was just so fucking cool. Um, yeah. It was really small. The front half of the stage was a little scary, not going to lie, but they did their best, of course. Um, the sound guy was great. He was really cool also. But the, the, the place itself, it's not like really a venue. It's just an art gallery, more or less. Mm-hmm. Um, and outside, they had a, a more um, artists with their little vendor merch stands and they're simultaneously you know showing people things and selling yeah. their stuff and it was like it was the merge of two art forms that honestly intrigued me the most and that i really appreciated i talked to the owner for a little bit he's this dope australian guy um and yeah i think that would have to be my favorite uh favorite show we got to play with um um who did we get? I can't really remember. Okay, retrograde. Retrograde. Sink in was the touring band. Sink in. That's, oh, that's, that's, yeah. that's what Such I was trying nice to think of. Nice guys. Oh yeah. my gosh, yes. They had something going on. They like something happened with their vehicle, and they, they didn't have any gas money and needed to replace their tires or something like that. Oh. And then so it was real unfortunate. But when they said that, uh, that the, you know the little scene pulled together, and they definitely bought a, a handful of merch from them and this and that. Um, and retrograde too. They're really great guys. They're local, and they always throw sick ass shows. And then uh, I think Tate played the hard, oh, uh, hardcore band, right? That's yeah, right. very cool. Very cool band, actually. Yeah. Um, cool. I know there's one more, but all right. Well, moving on. <laughs> yes. Anyway, in the interest of time, I hate that. <laughs> I hate that phrase. Oh, uh, but moving on. So I'm going to ask a question. This is a usual interview question, and I apologize in advance. <laughs> okay. How would you define your band's musical style? Elevator pitch. Go. Just everything. No. <laughs> everything. That's a cop out, you know. yeah. We even play we make y- usual interviews. We sound like travelers, okay? <laughs> we sound like travelers. Yeah, we travel around and we sound like what we do. I would say <laughs> so like me being the person coming into the band, when when I first listened to the discography, I'd say it's very like uh heavy metal rock and roll. And we're definitely trying to experiment with more stuff, most definitely. Um I think we want to go a bit heavier, yeah? Yeah, it seems like over, every year we get a little heavier. Yeah. Um, our first really? song was very like radio hard rock, yeah, was, you know. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, you play what you know. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You know, it was, I, it was like, hey, we have a good song. Let's just record it and like put it out there, yeah. you know. And and one by one, it was a little heavier, a little heavier. Um, you know, we do the screaming and singing. So that's actually yeah. the smart way to do it is like cast the wide net and then. Slowly be like, no, this is what we really sound. No, this is what we really sound like. Yeah, yeah. Who's sticking with us? Come on. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. 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 And what's nice is like as we're evolving and growing as a group, um, I feel like more, like more. How do I say it? Like every time we write a song, it's getting more and more like us, which is really cool too. And I like that a lot. So yeah, we just like to write what's fun, what we like at the time. There's always different inspirations to come forth depending on the period of time of our lives. So really, when we write things, it's. we, uh, me personally, I don't really think about genres. I just think about what I just wrote and how fun it would be to play and listen to and just kind of go on from there. Usually when I write stuff, when other people tell me what it sounds like or what type of um, general genre thing it comes from, 
I've never heard of them before, so I have to look them up, and I always think that's super cool. Cool. That is pretty cool, actually. That's like a kind of a way to, to like discover yeah. new music in a way too. There is a few bands that I've discovered because of that. Like nice. I never really listened to Thrice very much or um, um, Foxing. Those guys. Mm-hmm. Those guys are good. Yeah. Going off what you said about uh, not really seeing genre anymore, I agree with that. I feel like music's more like moods now. Like mm-hmm. I feel like genre is big mood. I feel big like moods, big vibes. Yeah. Lit, yeah. Lit. Like I feel like genre is kind of like an outdated my, term. My teenager's personally. just upstairs getting angry for no reason. Like, <laughs> I'm cringing and I don't know why. Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, but uh <laughs> all right. Let me just uh, get back on track. Genre. So yes, yeah, so I feel like genre is a little bit of an outdated term. I feel like music is more like a mood now. I mean, you know, there's no there's I wouldn't consider sad to be a genre because sad is a mood, happy is a mood, all the, you know. Sad core. Sad, well, sad core. Sad a dad core. That's something that I want to be the pioneer of. <laughs> I've never heard that, and that is amazing, and I immediately noticed that I was like, yeah. <laughs> sport. Yes. Yes. t shirt, just sad Dude, dad. Aw, oh, sport. <laughs> I'm not mad, I'm disappointed. disappointed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the, the tagline of the band. We're not mad, we're, we're just dis- da, 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 disappointed. It's the album name. <laughs> That's no, awesome. Yeah, it's like... Right on. Um, yeah. I, and, you know, I get all sorts of responses to that question, but it's important you have some sort of elevator pitch because people go, like, oh, you're in a band? What do you play? Or what mm-hmm. do you sound like? Uh, because that's, you know, word of mouth still matters. You still got to be like, oh, well, we're this. Are you interested? Cool. Here's what we play. Speaking of which, what's coming up next? Like, the, on the big horizon, what's uh, what's in the future for Travelers? Well, we have our well, we have our show tonight, which is pretty cool. Which is what it's February fourth. You're not gonna yeah, this is not gonna get posted by then. <laughs> yeah, but just to keep it dated, right? No, um, I know we don't like that, but um, oh no, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. February fourth. Um, no, I mean we're kind of like gonna take a little bit of a of a back seat. We're gonna focus on the writing and stuff, and just kind of you know get ready for the next kind of kind of thing after this, which is cool. Um, mm-hmm. Now your work is. Is there a single in the works or an album in the works, or is it now is when you are going to start spitballing and thinking about it? You know, we have a, we have a single coming up, which is going to be cool. We are uh, working on a couple other things, but yeah, we're thinking at least EP. If it turns into an album, that's cool. You know, we that would be awesome. Um, it's always fun writing albums. You know, as as like products, I guess. Um, <laughs> I mean, I like albums because if I whenever I did an album, I tried to make a story if I could, or at yeah. the very least, a cohesive thought. Mm-hmm. Right. As opposed to just the greatest hits or whatever. Yeah, most um, definitely. So, speaking of which, definitely, if you haven't already, follow them. The, I'll have their social media down in the description. Follow them so you can keep track of what they're doing. Uh, their live show is amazing. It's very high energy. I had a hard time keeping up with my camera. And <laughs> I, 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 I think I'm going to be going to that show tonight, and I'll probably be bringing that camera right there and um, do my best to keep up with you. So, you know, I expect high <laughs> snare clearing jumps. Okay. Oh, you have no fucking idea. I do. Ooh. I've seen you play. Ooh, <laughs> I'm using like I'm using the fucking the heaviest snare drum I've ever owned in my life. That shit is like a bull whip. I expect from you. I expect some sort of, <clears throat> or or at the very least, the very least twirl right, right you're gonna... behind the head. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I want all the '80s tropes, buddy. Let's go. Oh, shit. No, I had a I had a drummer, a Billy Kessner, who's been on the the channel uh, before. He we, there was this one song, you know, dun, 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 it, it was like a, a bop, 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 and he was like, brr, 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 and and it was like his film moments. He would be bop, 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 click, and then he, and then we would just all wait. <laughs> <Nice. laughs> nice. That was my favorite part of the show. And, and, and uh, or if you had if you had a like if this was the ceiling at a venue, mm, yeah, you, you can't see it, but it's eh, five feet up. Then it would be like. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> okay, real quick. Dude, I'm not coming down there. It's stuck. I want, I want that. I want the drum major, you know, razzle dazzle, baby. Yeah, bring back the old drumline stick flip tricks, man. You don't, so you you don't have to run laps. The snare comes with you. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Yeah. Right on. Um, stick around. We're going to be seeing, uh, I think, a music video or something from you guys coming yeah. up here. Yeah. We're still iffy on that. But in the meantime, like I said, if you want to be on the channel, hit me up. If you want to support the channel, please consider uh, clicking the sponsor down in the description or go to the Room 6 social media link. That's where you can get stuff. If you're uh, interested in the sponsor, you can, you know, pick up some merch and support the scene. I got all sorts of stuff, including Are You Ready to Rock Today? 
Did you, you know, make music, not excuses, all sorts of cool things. And um, if you don't see something you want, hit me up. I can design something for you. In the meantime, I think we're going to temporarily say goodbye. Temporarily say goodbye. And <laughs> I want to thank you guys for coming on the show. Thank you for watching. And yeah. Thank support, you for having support us. local music. No worries. Yeah, it's all right. Just totally good job. Thank you for having us. I really yeah, it appreciate great. it. It's yeah. been awesome being on the show and I do love it. getting to talk a little bit. It's really cool. Yeah. Right <laughs> so, um, yeah, temporarily say goodbye. Temporarily right. say goodbye. Bye, Until next time. for coming on the show it was a great interview and an awesome music video in the meantime if you want to know where to find them hit that social media handle down in the description and uh like i said if you want to come on the channel let me know if you want to see more videos like this please click up here if you want to check out my music uh, click over there and uh if you want to subscribe i'd really love you please don't forget to ring the bell click up there and if you want to be one of those people on that list over there 
consider coming on the show or, you know, sponsoring or supporting. It all matters. It all helps. And I appreciate every one of you. In the meantime, remember to be amazing. And we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say goodbye, guys. See you guys. Later, Gators. Later. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Oh, I mean, I was <laughs> right on the side there. <laughs>